Thank you so much, Kevin. So we're really excited to be part of this uh, year's Storm Hacks. It's the first time that we've uh, sponsored the project, but uh, actually one of our colleagues and also employees here uh, to one of our sister companies, his name is Chabam, he mentioned about the project, uh, about the whole uh, Storm Hacks weekend. And uh, we were quite excited to, to join um, this project. So. Thank you so much again for, for the invitation. And um, I'm just uh, going to introduce myself and uh, also Alex. So we're both uh, working here at this startup called Ergonomics. I'm on the engineering side of things, overseeing the uh, whole department. And uh, Alex is helping us with everything that has to do with web development and software on the cloud side. So we're going to talk a little bit about that technology uh, later on throughout uh, the spotlight. But uh, I just want to say that this is as real as it can get. I'm here at the office. There's boxes everywhere. There's a little bit of a banner um, just hidden be, uh, behind the boxes. And uh, this is where we uh, manufacture and assemble the desks, uh, the bikes. And this is where uh, we have uh, all the engineers collaborating. We're a very young team of uh, around 50 engineers. Not all of them work here at the office. And uh, this is a clear representation of how uh, in these times we all work remotely. Well, most of us work remotely as well. So just to get started about uh, how ergonomics came to be. So in 2018, uh, my colleague and I just we're talking about a way in which we can spin off a previous company that we had called Inventor Research Inc. And we wanted to be able to provide a product that would be appealing for um, people that, uh, especially on the tech uh, sector, because we were quite, uh, quite inspired by all the uh, different changes that have gone in this past decade, especially with the IoT, uh, a wave uh, coming in and also with the whole cloud aspect uh, for the smart homes. So we ended up having this uh, realization about desks and uh, workspaces in general, which was uh, a little bit before COVID. So in this way, we were uh, a little bit on the uh, lucky side of things because we didn't even know that most of the world was going to be behind a, a desk and behind the screen for pretty much the whole day in this past couple of years right so we ended up noticing that uh, we were spending quite a bit of money on chiropractors and uh, because we were working at least eight or nine hours a day behind the screen and um, and part of that problem is that we were not moving much at all. And here in the next slide, I'm, I'm going to showcase more or less uh, how things were evolving in terms of the, uh, the, the problem that we encountered, right? So most of uh, the human life has been moving and just trying to uh, spend most of the time like either uh, going to get food uh, or just get uh, uh, pretty much from one place to another before before we had cars, before we had some kind of transportation. So our mod our bodies were meant to move for that throughout that whole uh, period. But in a very short amount of time, we uh, with the industrial revolution, so pretty much all of our time was spent uh, slowly and slowly in, in a workspace behind a screen, behind a table, behind an, uh, an office. And, uh, and we were noticing that part of that issue of having that back pain, part of that issue of having um, like that sedentary life was that our furniture was not uh, adapting to our current lifestyle. So uh, I just want to ask real quick to hear all of the people that are, uh, are here and you can put something in the chat. I don't know, Kevin, if they can type things in the chat. Uh, how many of you guys have a sit and stand desk? Let's see if, if there's something here in the chat. No? 
even one no yeah so uh from the comments uh i'm saying um, i'm looking that yeah most of the people don't have a sitting stand desk and most of uh, even before we started this company some some of us were just working with our laptop sometimes in in our couch for a long time because that was a comfy place but eventually that that definitely takes a toll on our backs on our focus on uh how we're spending um our time and energy right so even for people that had sit and stand desks we were noticing that most of the people don't actually move them at all throughout the day uh, because we're very focused on uh, either a work or either uh, meetings and uh, most of the people don't even move them up or down throughout the day more than once or twice and that's and from our research, that was even on the higher spectrum of, of movement. So what we wanted to do in ergonomics is just merge that furniture aspect, which it hasn't grown in terms of technology much in the past years, and also the IoT aspect. So uh, what we did is create our own proprietary uh, controller, which has Wi-Fi, which what has Bluetooth. And at the same time, we built uh, an infrastructure in an ecosystem of an iOS app, uh, an Android app that connects to uh, the desk. And we're able to have a ton of different uh, features that we can add to the desk. And, and it's kind of uh, a furniture that is not going to have the same features when you buy it as uh, when uh, you're uh, currently using it or, or uh, in years to come, right? And that's the the beauty of uh, over the air updates as well. So in this case, uh, our desk through Wi-Fi and through Bluetooth are is able to provide that uh, firmware updates in case there's an issue, in case we want to update uh, the desk with uh, new new features. And one of the main things uh, behind the development of all this technology. It was the whole aspect of automated movement. So we were noticing that people were not actually moving that much. So what can we do? Well, provide that uh, ease of use, in this case, routines that maybe every 15 minutes, every 13, 13 minutes, the desk is gonna be moving up and down. Uh, and there's even an automatic mode that it doesn't even uh, send you uh, a message so you can there's all obviously a disclaimer uh, if you want to use it but i personally use it because if not i would just my phone would just wait there um, until i click the button so that it moves but sometimes because i'm very focused i don't even look at my uh, at my phone right so this will just move every 15 or 30 minutes or whatever configuration that you want and it's quite uh it almost forces me to move so that that was part of the whole uh, aspect of making this uh, desk uh, an iot product so then later on we started adding more and more technology so we had our api our database our bluetooth wi-fi and we started adding voice assistant aspects so so that we can integrate it more into the smart home uh, uh market so we ended up uh, validating and, and certifying our product on Amazon Alexa. So we are the first desk that has that certification for a desk. So if you go to Amazon and, and type ergonomics smart desk, it's going to be buried a little bit into the um, whole uh, aspect of products because you have to pay quite a bit of money to be on the first page but uh, you will see that our, our products are certified there uh, alexa at least the desk and that's pretty much an overview of how this came to be and uh, we uh, you can download the app from ios from android and and test it out there's a guest a user account you don't need to create an account in order to to uh, start using the app and we have a little bit uh, of that social aspect as well. So this means that we want to have a little bit of a gamif gamified experience so that people can also uh, add friends and know, uh, have that accountability aspect 
because one of the hardest parts of of getting going with the whole uh, movement aspect of or you've been going to the gym. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Maybe you get motivated for uh, a couple of weeks. And then after that, those couple of weeks, the motivation starts fading away. And that's when that accountability comes into place. So we are trying to put a little bit more on the a gamified experience, having some challenges for the day to day, having a leaderboard in which all the ergonomics users can see, oh, that guy has been using the desk and has burnt a lot of calories. Maybe that can motivate me on a month to month basis. So that's what we uh, bundled into the app as well. The whole motivational and uh, accountability aspect. So that's for the desk. Now we wanted to uh, spend a little bit more calories than just sitting and standing. So we ended up uh, making and manufacturing the uh, sit and stand uh, desk and also now the under uh, the desk bike. So what the under de desk bike does is it has an energy harvesting system. So you, have, you don't have to plug in uh, your bike to the outlet. You don't have to change batteries to be able to use your bike uh, as an IoT device. So the bike itself has uh, an energy harvesting system. Whenever you're pedaling, it powers the microcontroller and our PCB board so that it uh, can be accessed through Wi-Fi, through Bluetooth, and through the app. So that way you can start pedaling and the app is going to be tracking your calories, it's going to be tracking how much energy you're generating, and also it's going to be tracking the uh, whole aspect of the analytics for, for you to see in the, uh, in the Android and iOS app. So in this case, obviously this, is, uh, this bike is connected to the API. The API is sending that information to your phone and that's how we can uh, have that sit and stand aspect but also the movement part the movement parts of uh, being able to have a little bit of uh, that cardio during your day and uh, you might be thinking well isn't it hard to just write and type and do your normal day-to-day -day, uh, behind the computer but at the same time biking so that's why we have uh, in our bike uh, a different configuration so that you can just pedal without having too much resistance. Or maybe if you're watching a video or you're in the middle of a meeting, you can increase the tension and the effort that you're going to be pedaling at. And that way you can customize your workout experience. So then the that's that's the whole aspect of having the desk and the bike uh, aspect of uh, as a whole ecosystem so let's see someone is asking here about the slide yeah so i, I was just uh in in this slide to just uh, showcase the the actual uh, movement but here are the desk and the bike now and and yeah, so you can see that the the desk itself doesn't seem to have any buttons. So that's because we embedded uh, an, a capacitive touch um, sensor on our desk. So it actually looks like a normal desk, at least on the tabletop side. And then the bike has all the electronics on the enclosure, as we can see in this render. And I'll, I'll uh, give you a, a small presentation of this desk. I'm actually currently using one of the desks and uh, you can see that we can go to sit or stand, no hands. <laughs> and it's just a matter of double tapping and it's just gonna go automatically to my uh, standing height. Then I just double tap again in here in this sensor, and it's just going to start moving down. So in this case, it's really easy to use, very simple, and that's what we wanted to do, have that um, aspect of easing the, uh, the desk usage. And 
Also, we have integrated Siri. So in this case, I'm I'm gonna try. I'm I'm gonna sweat a little bit because this is in testing mode uh, <laughs> still. But if I say, "Hey Siri, move my desk to standing," so in this case, one sec. Okay, done. Move your desk to standing. So Siri would move my desk to standing as well. So you can just go to your house. You can. Uh, go to the kitchen and then you say, well, I want my desk to be prepared into uh, standing mode. So when I go to my office, you can uh, start in, in the position that you want without having to press a button or, or anything. And that's part of the Amazon certification as well. So if you have an uh, Amazon uh, hub, and that would also work with the desk. So those are a little bit of features that we've been um constantly upgrading our desk with and it's the same electronics that we had since a couple of years ago so that means that every year uh, we can also update the features that we have for our desk and create less of that uh, th throwing the furniture away and and buying a new one so what we wanted is to have uh, a sustainable as well system in which the furniture itself, even though it's a tech object, uh, it can also evolve throughout the lifetime of the product. So that's a little bit of the desk, the bike, and uh, I can uh, pass the, the mic to my colleague, Alex, and uh, so that he can explain a little bit of the technology behind also our e-commerce site, the technologies that we use, and. Um, and what is the experience of uh, working here at Ergonomics? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Alex. I actually went to SFU Software Systems, and now I'm working here. Um, I'm the lead full stack developer. And, and I guess in terms of what our stack is, we have, we're working on very soon releasing a Gatsby front end site. So that's React Gatsby. And then we have a Flask server kind of in the middle, um, as well as a Node.js. Oh, yeah, so see, yeah. Um, I have to explain what SOCI means every time, but hopefully everyone in, in chat here knows. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, and then we have a Node.js backend. So the all of these should be relatively new technologies. The Flask is a little old. You might think of it kind of like Ruby on Rails, and we mostly use our Flask repo to deal with checkout stuff. So um, our flow is e-commerce, but our big mono repo does also deal with a lot of the app logic and users um, on top of all the checkout and e-commerce data. So that's kind of our stack going on. Um, yeah, and um, I don't know if we have too much that's astounding. It is relatively like, as you might expect from an e-commerce website, there's just some nice looking front end stuff. There's a communication flow, a lot of third party integrations. And then, oh, I'm just seeing a question. Do the bike have to be paired with the desk or can it be used on its own? Like, mm -hmm. The bike can be used on its own. Um, so like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a lazy guy, at least when I'm like, like doing my developer stuff on a computer, I don't really want to like get distracted by like a notification to like, oh, it's time to stand or whatever. So like usually bike is like a very nice way to not really change up. You can like pedal and then you can not pedal when you're focused. Um, so the app does pair with all of that. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's the, we have like three repo stacks. And then our team is, or at least my team on the web dev side is four people outside of me and then one QA person. And generally we're very, uh, we're very lax. We do know, as Sergio said, that like a lot of our employees are young. So we do try to pace things in a way where everyone can learn. We do try to teach people both new technologies and old technologies. So um, I guess just as an example, right before ergonomics i was at a different company a part of their marketing team and one thing that i think web developers often forget is how to think about things from that marketing side because if you need to do a b testing you might need to go a little bit into um, how you deployed the website and set up like multiple versions of the website like per branch and then like have a way to what does it use like a serverless function to swap between branches and use cookies to track that 
Um, you probably also don't know very much about progressive images to optimize like the page load time, but those are all things that we have to take into consideration for the front end, as well as the stuff you might learn in school for optimizing backend speed um, and just writing clean code. So, you know, our codes, our our code is relatively clean. We do, you know, uh, have a little bit of legacy code as we go, but generally our entire tech stack is just something that has grown over time and it's something we continually maintain. And our team, we really try to prioritize learning uh, within our team in order to help them grow into better developers and help create a better site. So I think that's pretty much it, Sergio. Is there anything else you might want me to add or discuss? Uh, no, I think that's, that's pretty much uh, good in terms of the technology and uh, the back end, front end, how uh, we also have a little bit of different uh, departments and disciplines in our company. So as mentioned, we have Android, uh, iOS, API, embedded, mechanical engineering, uh, marketing, a lot of different positions that we've uh, expanded to in the lapse of this couple of years. And uh, last but not least, we have another member of our company. His name is Alden, and he's on our marketing team. And uh, he will explain a little bit about the, the projects that we're working on this year, especially an Indiegogo campaign that we're going to be launching, and also a little bit of the experience on the marketing side with uh, all the different social media aspects. Sure. Thanks, Sergio. Um, can you guys hear me OK? My, I'm not seeing my thing light up. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Fine. Thanks. So just going straight into it, we are building an Indiegogo campaign for our new version of the desk coming very quick because we did a Kickstarter about two years ago for the initial version one. And then now that we have uh, like we have some new iterations of it, we're throwing it out again on Indiegogo. So what that process has looked like is doing a lot of different like research to do with what's important to have on there and then building the whole thing. Um, and so, yeah, and then I guess going back to what the whole experience has been like here and what sort of social media stuff we've been doing, it's, it's really grown a lot because I've been here for the last two years and our company has completely changed its trajectory and its day-to-day -day activities throughout the entire thing. So when we first started, we were entirely focused on the Kickstarter campaign. So when we were doing that, we were focusing a lot on say paid advertising and building our network of people very close to us. So people that engage with us on social media and stuff and people that see our ads and people that react to our, our email campaign. So that was our large focus from the beginning. And then after that, we started dealing with different sorts of problems that we had never ran into before, like customer or customer questions and different shipping issues and stuff like that. So then the marketing team completely switched then to focus on our paid advertising after that. Um, and then we've been running that for a while. And then we started doing a new thing where we worked with a marketing agency who came in and offered some experience because we were quite a small team, a very, green people right straight out of university so we had a lot more experience there and then we worked with them to start building some great new creative and stuff like that um and we've recently just started doing a lot of work on amazon which has been learning a completely new paid marketing area and a completely new set of issues and complications to come with that as well but in large and whole working here has been a very um it's been a very learning focused thing like Alex said as well for the for more of the web development stuff because it is a, a, like a lot of the people that work here are very young right straight out of school kind of stuff and so we are constantly trying new things and constantly learning new things like I have dove, dove into areas of work that I had never even considered before working here like for example I can start doing video editing and voice stuff it is stuff that I never considered I'd be doing while working somewhere and it's because it's a very small team as well, right? We're a team of two people and then one manager. So whenever we have something come up, it's one of the two of us figuring out how we're going to do it and how we're going to run it. It's been great to learn a lot of new things. Um, yeah, does, does that kind of answer what you're looking for, Sergio? Is there anything else I can dive into with that? 
Yeah, no, that's great because that's a good segue for um, me to uh, just give you guys an idea of the different kind of uh, employment positions that uh, we are also offering. So we invest a lot of time uh, into having a co-op position and internships here at our company. So if you guys, any of you are interested in any of the positions that we have available. So in this case for the summer term, we're looking for a couple of mechanical engineers, a couple of um, mobile full stack developers uh, and junior positions, obviously, uh, into especially for the iOS position. And we are also looking into two front end uh, programmers for our Gatsby site, as um, Alex was mentioning, and for a different other website A-B testing that we're currently uh, pursuing. So opportunities are there. If you're excited to work with a very young team, quite flexible team, and also uh, you have the skills uh, to, to be part of the company, and then we're all open doors for that as well. So now, uh, Kevin, I don't know if we have some time for Q&A. Oh, yes, we do. We have 30 minutes. Perfect. So it would be great if you can either um, send us a question through the chat or also unmute yourselves and uh, just say hi. That's also an option, uh, but we're all ears. We'll do our best to answer your questions. So I think there was one from Karen uh, about can the bike be paired to the desk and can it be used on its own? Uh, yeah, so the bike itself can be, as mentioned, pedaled and be used by itself. You don't have to be paired to the phone to, to have access to the, the whole aspect of the calories. So the bike itself, you start pedaling and uh, you can just do your workout Right now I'm in, in, in the bike, as you, if you can see my, my shoulders a little bit. So uh, it powers up uh, the electronics. And as soon as you uh, open the app, it is going to send that information to, to the app. And it doesn't plug in, it doesn't connect to the desk. It's just the desk and the bike connects to the phone or to the uh, IoT uh, API and device. So that's how it would work. Hopefully that answers uh, the question. And this is a question for Alden as well. Do you have marketing interns, PR and communications wise? Um, yeah, so the people we have right now, both myself and then um, my closest coworker, we both started as, started as interns. I started about two years ago and did an eight month. And then I came on part-time to finish school and then have been doing one year full-time since then. And um, same for her. I think she did an eight month as well and then came on full-time after the fact. So kind of, I guess, depending on how you look at it. That's good. And one other question from Denzel is about having to relocate to Victoria. So if it's a software position, uh, we have people all around Canada. So uh, Alex, for example, it's in the mainland. Uh, we're here in Victoria, Alan and me. There's uh, people from Winnipeg, some from Calgary. So if it's a software position, in this case, um, the front end developer, uh, that can be done remotely. So we're quite open to have that uh, remote uh, position. And also we, for the mechanical engineering, unfortunately, that has to be here at the office, especially for the assembly part and also developing new technologies for our bike, especially the energy harvesting system. So those are the ones that um, uh, that we have. And open positions, yes. So the open positions are the two mechanical, again, two mechanical engineers and also, but these are internships, not uh, full-time positions. Two mechanical engineers, two um, of the front-end developers and two uh, of the mobile app developers. Okay. 
All right. Any other question? Yes, I have a quick question, if that's OK. Oh, yes, of course. Boone. Awesome. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I'm a health sciences student, so I don't really have any technical backgrounds. Um, so the topic of or the company itself really intrigues me because it looks at pain management and knowing that pain is like the leading disability around the world. Um, I was just wondering, like, how does the research behind ergonomics um, get conducted? Is it by uh, developers or is it by health researchers? Oh, that, that's a great question, Devin. So, yeah, so sorry that I forgot the whole uh, research aspect as well of it and focusing mostly on technology. Um, but yeah, there's a team as well of schools that are helping us with all the research aspects. So we have McGill University, we have Moncton University. We're actually gonna be visiting them in a couple of weeks uh, for the focus group that they have. So it's a pretty cool research in the way that they're using uh, 10 of our desks uh, for each university. They're putting sensors uh, to for people that are using the, the desks and we're monitoring a, a focus group uh, to see if they increase their um, their overall quality of life in terms of the pain and also in terms of how many calories and how much movement they're doing throughout the day. Uh, all of this is already has already been based on previous research and, and regarding the movement aspect. So uh, the whole purpose of the sit, sit and stand desks is mostly about moving, not about just standing for the whole day, because that's uh, also not as beneficial in the long term. The whole aspect is just going from standing to sitting to biking and just moving throughout the day. That has been part of the research that has been done before, but uh, it has never been done in a, a automated experience with a standing desk and a bike. So that's currently what we're pursuing in this next year uh, for, for research. Yeah, and we also have a, a health medical representative. Uh, she is um, uh, a doctor in, in terms of the a medical doctor. And she's our bridge uh, for all those research and for with the with the universities. Sweet. Hope well, that if you guys ever want to do a focus group with SFU, let me know. <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> Thank you. That would be great. If, if you have a supervisor that might be interested in that topic, of course. Sounds good. All right. All right. Let's see which other. Uh, questions we have here. Okay, so for the summer, uh, so if, if you're interested in any co op position, you can uh, email hr at ergonomics.com and our HR manager will review uh, all those applications. Uh, some of them are might be already at SFU. Uh, we have had uh, alumni from SFU, from UVic, from um, UBC and Vancouver Island University. So we're constantly putting posts there in each platform. And also question, uh, not a question, but oh, thanks for the comments there. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions here in the forum. I have one question on my side. Not all the members here are technically from SFU and not all of them are enrolled in the co-op program. So if you are not enrolled in a co-op program or don't attend SFU specifically, how may they kind of reach out for internship opportunities with ergonomics? Yeah, of course. So just reiterating again, you can reach out to hr at ergonomics.com. That can be the best way to do that. And we can definitely reply with the job opportunities that we have at the moment. Uh, feel free to check it out throughout the months because every summer, every um, even for, for this front end uh, internship, uh, even if you're not at, at school, we can make something happen and that doesn't have to wait until the summer as well so so yeah feel free to contact hr at ergonomics.com awesome you can also drop that email to the chat just so that everybody has the correct spelling and everything and then um, another kind of question on my side is that 
Do you guys offer co-op opportunities outside of summer? And then if so, what types of roles are generally available? <laughs> Yeah, so types of jobs that are normally available are in all those uh, areas. Some, uh, depending on the on the months, sometimes we have uh, embedded electronics positions. So that's for firmware development for uh, our uh, microcontrollers. And also we have uh, iOS, Android, mechanical engineering. We have also the whole aspect of uh, manufacturing and uh, automation for uh, manufacturing. So the whole aspect of uh, serial codes, programming and making it easier in order to assemble and program our products. That's also some, something that um, we offer. And sometimes there's, there's positions for marketing and for customer support. So, so yeah, it's, it's been growing uh, throughout the years. Uh, as Alden mentioned in 2018, it was just a team of, of three people. And now we're around uh, 54 people. So it's, it's grown quite significantly and we, um, we're, we're truly happy to also uh, offer internship positions for eight months uh, here uh, to our company. All right. Maybe if there's no other questions, I can show you a little bit about how the whole app works. So in this case, I wish I, I had a simulator here because this is quite not the best way to showcase it. But normally this is our, our app and we have our friends on this side. We have a leaderboard on this side with a small nice crown for the person that is going the first place for all these different um, categories. Then we have our connection speech. In the connection space, you can see that I'm connected to a desk and a bike. And if I click on the bike itself and I see the bike remotes, uh, you can see that I'm currently trying to pedal at 18 kilometers per hour, um, which uh, it's a normal kind of pace and as you can see I'm not swaying that much so that means that it's it's uh, good enough for for normal work and also this icon right here can show you the battery percentage and also if you're um, generating electricity through the energy harvesting system also for the desk part uh, there's a Bluetooth connection in which I click here, the desk is going to automatically move up and, and, and then you can move it down as well. So those are the main aspects of the, of the desk itself. And, um, but yeah, feel free to check it out. Uh, we definitely need, um, good, uh, good people for the app, especially for iOS and also for the front end aspect. So I think that's pretty much it in terms of the the presentations. I don't know if there's any, any question. No? Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys and hopefully you can check out our products. You can check out what we're doing. Uh, there's gonna be new announcements in the next months regarding the Indigo campaign as, uh, Alden mentioned, and and yeah, we uh, might be launching a new product this summer, and it has to do with a, a desk controller. If if you have uh, already a, a sit and stand desk, uh, you would be able to access to all of these features with this new product that we're we're gonna be uh, launching in in the summer. So. That's uh, that's pretty much it. Kevin, I don't know if there's anything else. Sergio, actually, if I could add one last thing. Sure, go for it. So um, just if you are located around Vancouver mainland, we are going to be putting in a little showroom kind of thing soon downtown where you can just kind of come and check out the desk. Um, and this will probably be at one of the WeWorks downtown. So if you're ever curious um, and, you know, we can we can get you in to like, try out what that desk and app is like and if there's 
you know, enough demand. And maybe if some of you start working with us, we can probably start setting stuff up in universities too, just to give students like yourselves just a chance to try it out. Um, yeah, and just make all of you guys really self-conscious about your posture while you're sitting and working. Um, but yeah, just wanted to put that out there. All right, Sergio, back to you. Thank you, Alex. That's true. And uh, we hope that you uh, have a great experience at Storm Hacks. I've heard from a lot of um, our employees that it's been a really great experience and hope it's it's a great time for you guys. Really nice chatting with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody from the ergonomics team. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely thinking about picking up a smart desk with Siri integration as well. That's definitely quite a thing that you don't see every single day. Thank you for showcasing your products as well as talking a little bit more about the team what tech stacks you're using, as well as internship opportunities that are coming up. As well as like to big thank you for everybody uh, for staying for this entire session. If you have not gotten um, the socio code for the workshop, I'm just gonna post it really quickly in chat. And then once again, thank you to all the presenters and all the attendees. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care guys. Bye.